Hello everybody and welcome to this new PhotoCard on Air video. My name is Jessica Barresi and I'm delighted today to be here for an exclusive interview in Italy with the amazing renowned photojournalist and um, two-time Pulitzer Prize winner and Canon ambassador Mohamed Muhaizen. Welcome Mohamed, thank you so much for joining us today. We're pleased to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. It's an absolute pleasure to be with you and to share my story with your audience and other audience around the world. Thank you. Our, our pleasure, really. So if you agree, uh, I would start with a basic and hopefully easy question for you. That is, who are you? I'm a human being, a visual storyteller who has been for 20 years traveling the world with his camera to document stories that matter. Perfect. Perfect introduction, I would say. So I know that you often say that if something relevant happens without being documented, it's basically like it never occurred. So this is the reason why you take pictures of these uh, events or people that you consider relevant. So uh, you want these events to happen, basically. Uh, my question for you is, uh, nowadays, so in 2023, is taking pictures enough to make things happen? We should start somewhere. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a storyteller. I'm a guy who travels with his camera to document moments, moments in time. Most of these moments are about people, people who had to go through a lot of things to survive. Stories of survival, stories of hope, stories of courage. By documenting these stories, I spread awareness and I help changing stereotypes. And most important, I raise the voice of the people seen in my photographs. These pictures get immortalized, live forever. If, if the help doesn't come today, it will come tomorrow. Keeping in mind, it's a marathon. It's not a hundred meter sprints. And I deeply believe in the power of photography as a force for good. Okay, so um, we can say that your goal is to uh, raise awareness, as you said, and your main tool for this purpose is storytelling. So I'm going to ask you, how can a storytelling make a difference? So how can it be outstanding in a lot of other storytelling projects? What are the strong points of your storytelling? I mean, it's very important as a, as a visual storyteller to remember that I'm a human being who's photographing other human beings, spending a lot of time in the same environment, becoming part of the landscape, respecting people and gaining their trust is the key to a successful story, is the key to a successful pictures. But keeping in mind the purpose why I'm capturing this picture is to make a difference, is to help, is to empower, is to inform and encourage and motivate other people to follow my steps. It's not just a picture. This is a message. This is a voice. And this is a testimony that lives forever. And with that, a lot of responsibility come from my behalf as a storyteller. And that's the key for a successful story. Yeah, I totally agree. And as you started answering this question, uh, you reminded me of uh, the Visa pour l'image director's words. Some days ago, I was having a look at the, the festival website and I read these words from him. He said, well, actually, he suggested people to wonder why photojournalism still exists in 2023, despite stunning AI uh, progress, despite smartphones, despite uh, social media overwhelming us with uh, thousands of images on a daily basis. And his answer, his personal view, is exactly what you said. So, he says that people, by the way, still need real stories told by real people. Um, and there you are. <laughs> you are exactly a human uh, 
talking about real stories by pictures, but not just by pictures. So you tell real stories. And, and that's the strong points of photojournalism, I, I assume. Um, in that respect, I would like to ask you something because I know you often hold workshops for photographers, of course, but I'm curious about the other side. So what about people uh, looking at those pictures? Shouldn't we try to re-educate them to look at picture properly? So taking their time to immerse themselves in these stories, to fully understand what photographers would like to tell them. I dream of workshops for people to look at picture, not just for people who wants to take picture. What do you think? Thank you, Jessica. It's a very important point. I, for the last few years, I've been aiming to, to meet a lot of people outside my community, outside the photography community. I call the public. I call normal people, mothers, teachers, fathers, scientists, because one hand doesn't clap. You know, we all came to this planet on a purpose. And I want to complete my purpose. And everybody has a role to play. And if we all come together, definitely we will have a stronger impact. So whenever I travel, I meet ordinary people, I meet talents from different fields, from different departments, and I just speak to them about the importance of photography, the importance of documentation, but above all, the importance of being a good human beings, because we are all good at the end of the day in our own ways. It's a reminder, you know, a picture, a picture lives forever, you know, and capturing this picture, the story behind this picture is important as much as capturing the picture. So sharing these stories could inspire, could encourage, could empower, could open eyes, and could remind people of the kindness inside them to make a difference. I don't just take pictures. I aim to make a difference. I aim to change someone's life. And again, it's not a hundred meter sprint, it's a marathon. So these meetings with people on stages, photographers, uh, other kind of uh, professionals, it's also part of my mission to explain to people how important is visual storytelling and documentation. If something happens and we don't document it, it never happened. And that's the key message that I try to spread always aim to document that moments with respect, with credibility, with manners, with integrity. Fake news kind of spread it all over our world, but professionals who carry this flag of integrity, credibility, their pictures will always be the accurate source to help and inform and change the world, a picture at a time. Absolutely. So uh, you just talked about um, respect. Uh, and I, I was thinking about the fact that you often work in really critical scenarios and you focus on refugees or displaced people, people who are forced to leave their home or their houses, their countries because of conflicts or, or war. So I wanted to ask you, Uh, what's the reaction of these people to your camera as you approach them in these uh, hard conditions? You know, working, working with vulnerable people, with people who are forced to leave everything behind and go search for a new safe home, demands sensitivity, demands respect, and most important, demands you as a human to, be, to imagine yourself in their position. You know, whenever I take a picture, I imagine myself in the front of the camera, not behind the camera. And that's where I always feel welcomed because, you know, these people are educated. Many of these people has highly degrees. These people had homes, they had jobs, they had high skills, you know, and just they were unlucky that they were born or they were caught in the middle of the chaos. And that doesn't mean that we are superior than them. Leveling up 
respecting and imagining yourself in the other side help me to be the person who I am help people also to believe in what I do I always feel welcome when I arrive to any environment I always spend enough time before even taking pictures just for people to get curious and ask who's that stranger with a camera Try to give them the chance to digest the fact that there is a person who is here with a camera. So your behavior, your manners, the way you react is actually your access to be part of that story. I do my best to live what these people are living. I will never experience what they are living because I'm not in their shoes. But at least I can feel and understand and this is the only way I will be able to show a window of their daily life by becoming part of their landscape and environment and living part of what they are living. And that's the key. Yeah, it's really, it's really nice to, to hear you saying this. And in the meanwhile, we are looking at your amazing pictures. And um, you often focus on, on children. Why children? Children are the real victims of conflict. Children all over the world, they share the same things in common. They all seek fun, they seek joy, they seek happiness, no matter where they are from. And children manage to get the child out of me. They remind me where it all started. They, they take me back to the root when everything used to be colorful, when my hopes and my dreams were, were centered into positive things. So I believe a child has the right to make a decision. A child has the right to, to, to take actions. And by capturing these pictures, I simply carry their voices to the world. You, you often see children skipping rope in Rome or in Milan, and you can see the same image in Kabul or in, uh, in Islamabad or in uh, Ukraine. So these pictures simply connects our worlds. It's the same, the same scene happening somewhere in the world. However, the circumstances are different. So by capturing these moments, I just simply remind you how lucky you are to be in a safe place, to go at the end of the day to a home, have a warm meal, the opposite of most of the people that are photographed. So I want with this picture just to remind you how lucky you are and remind you that children are the real victims of the chaos that we adults are creating. Yeah, and if I'm not wrong, you yourself spend your childhood in a conflict zone, didn't That's you? True. I was... I'm a Jordanian national who was born in Jerusalem. So from the moment I opened my eyes, I was surrounded by chaos. I grew up with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. But even though there was always a chance for joy and fun as a kid, and this is the message that I want to share with the world, that even in the middle of the conflict, life never stops. It keeps going. And photograph is the proof for that yeah absolutely so one more question for you mohammed um can we say that um some of your pictures could help your subject in in practice could they improve not their whole life of course but maybe uh, part of it could it be helpful for them I, I started my, my mission as a photographer to inform the world. I wanted to tell the world what's happening around them. But in the middle, I realized I can do way more than just informing. I want to make a real difference. I want to help, support, empower. And when my picture started reaching the world, and I'm talking 10, 12 years back, I started receiving emails from people who want to help that individual, who want to help that woman, that child. And I became the messenger. My pictures connected two words, 
and the photographer became the bridge and the messenger. I managed to deliver gifts to individuals and I felt the importance of what I'm doing. And to answer your question, fortunately through my photograph, we managed to help individuals, we managed to help group. But the most important thing that through photographs, I established a Dutch nonprofit organization where now I can help you. I can share with you that we help tens of thousands of people in need in different parts of the world. We built a school for girls. We empowered thousands. We educated. And most important, we managed to share with millions of people around the world these stories, these voices. So people are aware of what we are doing and the importance of these photographs that behind these photographs, there are people, and these people were unlucky to be forced to leave everything behind, and actual difference has been made, and I'm proud to share that with you. Is there any example among these pictures that we are showing, any particular story about children or people that you could help thanks to your shots? I mean, most of these images that you see after I captured these pictures, I came back with a group of from my foundation to help them. We provided in most of these camps warm clothes, footwear. We provided hope. That's the most important thing. I didn't just come back and take their picture and leave. I came back years after or weeks after, and I showed them how these photographs are able to make a difference how what I do and what my colleagues in different parts of the world are doing is important. There is a hope out there and we should never stop believing. This particular picture, this father, he's an internally displaced Pakistani man who was just, it was a priceless moment the way he held his son and the love all over the place. We managed through, uh, through the foundation to establish a makeshift school for children to learn, to have their right of education, to be empowered, to dream of a better future. We give them the way to, to plan a better future. And that would not be possible without my passion, photography. Yeah, of course. What about this picture that was maybe the first one we played in this light show? This is... This is a moment that I captured in a, in a tented settlement in Jordan, you know, that where there is thousands of Syrian refugees fled the war and took refuge in neighboring Jordan. This particular settlement, constantly I visited back with, the, with Everyday Refugees Foundation and we provided people with, with, with the things that they need, the priority, what they need in their daily life. We provided mama's kit. What's a mama's kit? It's a small kit that gives the mother and her child everything they need in their daily life. It could be, a, a, you know, a permanent thing. It could be a temporary thing. But at least we start somewhere. At least we show people that we care. We show people that there is hope. And there are people outside who are thinking of them. Hope is the key. Yeah, you are... As we said in, in our introduction, a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner. Has this ever made things easier for you? Could you I'm, maybe enter some doors that are not accessible to other photojournalists? I mean, being an award-winning photographer helped. It made my picture's voice louder. It made the reach of the images, you know, also wider. But also it gave me a global credibility when I, when I speak to decision makers, they believe in you. They say, you're an award-winning photographer. I'm not bragging about it. It's a tool for me to make a difference. It gave me access to places I never dreamt to have access to. But that comes with a responsibility. I worked hard to build this reputation. I worked hard to let people feel safe around me. When I work in this environment, I, I'm simply invisible. 
because people are at ease. I'm not there to invade their privacy. I'm there to tell their stories. I'm there to raise their voice. And I'm there on a mission, hoping to make a difference in their life, big or small, at least we start somewhere. And with the foundation, I can tell you, we are somewhere. And I hope we can deliver and give and help more and more people in need. Yeah, you, you said you're more or less invisible, uh, despite it's quite difficult, I guess, because in, in some particular situations, you probably need to be uh, quick-witted and react fast to anything happening around you. And maybe you are also in dangerous situations. So I have a technical question for you. I would like to ask you if uh, the ongoing uh, um, evolution of technology helps you in that respect. Do you take advantage of the unceasing progress of technology? I I began photography in a different era. When I when I started as a photographer, we were developing films. We had analog and then the digital world came and we understood the value of time of speed. In a second, we can nowadays deliver the message from the camp, from the field, from the middle of the chaos to the doorsteps of people. Technology moves so fast. And me as a professional, as a visual storyteller, I have to be side by side with it. Or I will spend the rest of my life trying to catch up. One of the reasons that I established a nonprofit was technology, was social media platforms. These platforms are out there. The way you use it, the way you decide to take advantage of it and make it your portfolio as a photographer, make it make it the, the place to spread awareness through, share with the world. You behind these nicknames of people on social media platforms, there are the publics and there are decision makers and there are parliament members who are there who watch and listen and a picture could reach someone and a difference could be made. And I hope through these photographs, people could just simply wake up and say, I want to be involved. I don't want to stop the chaos. I want to help that girl. I want to help that boy. I want to make a difference. And it's a marathon. But I take advantage of the technology nowadays to make a difference and reach a wider audience and show them what's happening outside their doorsteps. Do you think um, aesthetic play an important role in photojournalism? Because maybe sometimes we sometimes think that contents are the main point of photojournalism, but uh, I guess aesthetic is important as well. So I refer to a series of elements like colors or tones or contrasts, the dialogue between lights and shadows, all of these tools that you have at your disposal, tools. I mean. we, we are attracted to beauty. When you see a beautiful flower, you approach it. When you see a beautiful scene, you stop by just to watch it. So I believe it's the same in a photograph. It's like a smile in the middle of the rubble. Most of the picture that you displayed in the slideshow, it's a beautiful pictures of sad situation. If this beautiful scene wasn't captured this way, it wouldn't have attracted your attention. It wouldn't have made you curious to dive deeper in that frame and start looking at the elements and then go to the caption, go to the information to read more. And that's the importance. Sometimes, and most of, my, of the times in my case, I have to attract your attention by giving that beautiful moment, that priceless smile of a father, that priceless moment of Zubaida here skipping a robe with the sun in her face, the background. When you look at it, you see hope, you see color. Color is life, light is life. And then you remember for a moment, there are tents, 
that say UNHCR, that means these children are displaced. I want to learn more about their life. And this is what I try to do. I spend a lot of time in one place to capture a moment that makes you dream and makes you curious, provoke your emotions. A picture without emotion is like a body without a soul. And I want you to live that moment and get curious to understand. And hopefully you would help. This is a moment from Kabul, Afghanistan, of a balloon seller. You'd, I used to travel to conflict zones and I look for life within war, for colors, for beauty, for daily life that we forget about. I want to show you that whenever there is a war, there is a life next to it. I remember there used to be funerals on my right and there was a baby just being born in my left. Just like this picture of Mikola and Sasha in the dorms and a shelter in Romania for Ukrainian refugees. I spent a lot of time with this kid and his mom. They allowed me in. They trusted me. They believed in me. And after spending hours, I managed to capture this moment of joy, of hope, of love amid chaos. They are displaced. They are in turmoil. They left everything behind but they still are humans who share a laugh and a joy and i was there to capture that moment that makes you also dream and laugh and hope and that's the power of photography a picture lives forever how important is post-processing for you to convey these emotions Look, I come from the old school that we believe in two words, dodge and burn. I post process the moment I capture my moment. You see, there is not much to be That's done it. after. I frame my picture. I take advantage of the available light. I capture the moment. I come back to my computer and I just copy my desk. And sometimes I have to brighten, sometimes I have to darken. And technology nowadays, these amazing cameras produce this quality, these lenses. I'm a Canon ambassador who has the advantage to, to test all Canon's new gear. And these cameras are amazing. So imagine when you have the talent, when you capture the emotion, and when you have this incredible high quality technology, the magic can come after in one frame. So what's your basic equipment, things that cannot be missed when you're, when you're there taking picture in these situations? I, I currently, I, I have a body of a camera and a couple of prime lenses. I use the EOS R5, it's a beautiful mirrorless camera, and I have 50 millimeter 1.2 and 35 millimeter 1.4. These for me are enough to be part of the landscape, not to invade people's privacy. It's a discreet, safe camera that whenever you are in a situation, people don't mind you. And you can spend a lot of hours in one place without being noticed, without you know, jumping into one's privacy and invading their privacy. Awesome. Okay, so if you agree, let's send our beautiful talk with a suggestion. So again, would you like to recommend our audience how to look at this kind of pictures from now on? I want you, when you look at a picture, close your eyes and imagine yourself the person who is living that moment. And if you are a visual storyteller, I want you to respect the people that you photograph and spend time around them and ask them questions, get to know them. Don't be just an outsider because your pictures will be just from the outside. Spend a lot of time because that's the key to capture a moment that lives forever and a moment that will be seen by a wider audience. Invest and love what you do because that's the key to success. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Mohammed. It has been enlightening for me, really emotional and moving, and I'm sure it's the same for our audience. Uh, I want to thank you. Uh, special thanks goes to Canon, uh, who was the connection point, we can say, between Photocal and Mohammed Mohaisen. And of course, I, I also thank um, our viewers, so our audience, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed it, you can feel free to subscribe our newborn YouTube channel uh, just to stay updated about our upcoming videos. So thank you. We can say that's all for now and see you next time. Grazie, Jessica. Thank you. Grazie, grazie a te. Ciao. Ciao.